Right, I've been messing with Cheat Engine in Tulip recently, and one of the big things in Tulip All Kisses has always been, is there a way to use the Kiss Anybody glitch on Mika? And I'm so close, like I, I've done it and everything, there's just one big problem, and it, it's a problem that if it were solved, it wouldn't just mean that Mika would be almost entirely skipped, but it also would have other effects throughout all kisses, including particularly with Cheapot. Because the problem is being able to break out of showing a character an item. And in this case, that item is the wooden gong uh, with Monk. And later on, it'll be Cheapot with the Tanuki, but uh, I, I might get to that. But for the moment, it's all about that wooden gong and Mika and just... How on earth have I figured out a way to use the Kiss Anybody glitch on Mika? Because there's a number of things that would seemingly make that incredibly difficult to try and set up. And it is quite a... <laughs> it's quite a setup. But uh, allow me to demonstrate as best as I can. So, first things first. We are, we are here at the train station in Worldly Desire Temple. Arriving on the 6 o'clock train. So it arrives at 6 and leaves at half 6. So the items I have are uh, Dad's Wooden Gong, of course, because that's the, uh, the the centerpiece of this, in order to get Monk to attempt to kiss us. And uh, we have some frogs there as well. As always, for glitchy stuff in Tulip, damage items are integral. So, from the start then, what we would do is this. This is probably what the setup would be, assuming an alternative setup that starts off with Monk instead of Conductor came to be a thing. There's, if this ever became possible and a route was implemented, there's a, you know, there's a chance that things could be different, but this is the, uh, the setup I've got right now, so. Kiss buffer with Conductor, eat the frog. So, pretty basic stuff, as far as tulip glitches go. And as we do in Tulip, uh, any percent, and in all kisses, we can go up here, get to the invisible stairs that are out of bounds, go up them a little bit, and then turn to jump up the rest of them, or like, flick up the rest of them, and now we're a layer above. Es essentially, walking on the ceiling of the map would be a, 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 an easy way to get the point across. Now, we need to get inside the cave, and if I walk here, we have that little jump, and then we slip down, then hold up and left. And that'll put us in the cave. From here, we go up, around, like up, up and around to the left, and then use a thing there to fix the camera. A little uh, detect, detect thingy that's there, a little camera thingy, little camera changer. So you line up with Monk, you pop up here, let's see, maybe like... One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. And then you hold up and left. That works, except maybe nine steps instead of eight. Either way, that seems to work. That might be a, a good setup for that. It's quite finicky, because if you're not very careful with how you move around there, the camera will go down to where Monk is and get stuck there. And that is a no-go. You need to have free camera. But anyway, yes, whenever you're in front of Monk, uh, before half eight, because at half eight he stops banging the gong um, and starts to get up and go to bed or whatever. You got a kiss buffer with him. And get his text up. Now the hard part is you need to time it. Because now we need to wait. We need to wait until... Enough time has passed that Monk's AI doesn't know what to do because he's supposed to start banging the, the gong and go to bed. Like, Bell is, is standing up there and going to bed and everything. But Monk will not stay in this position, frozen, unsure of what to do, um, until a quarter to 12. So that's 11.45 p.m. in the game. And that's, not, that's luckily not too far away. But the problem is we will probably need to figure out a way to, to time it. Now, of course, I have Cheat Engine up, as you can see on the top left. See, I can see the time value in frames, and uh, the value, I think it's like 43,000 and something is midnight. 43,200 or something like that. So I can just stay here, like, let's see, I'll pop up and then down, now I'm inside the cave. And so once I can see there that it goes to zero or something like that, 
I can just get rid of the text and then leave the cave knowing that Monk will be staying there and will not be going to bed, In which, because if he does, he'll be in a state where obviously I can't interact with him. Probably any time around now would be fine, because as I said, it's not 12, it's um, a quarter to it is when we can we can get going to Mika, but considering we also have to wait for Mika, there's not much harm in doing it this way, is there? So probably about now is fine. Yeah, that should be totally fine. And so we're still up here, and now I've exited the cave. Oh, however, Monk is still banging the gong. That should be fine. I'm, I think I'm used to him not banging it, but rather just being stood up. But uh, doing that is totally fine. So we gotta go down here to Mika. Now, Mika appears at 2 a.m. But even though normally when you're a layer above like this, things happening directly beneath you happen without a problem, for some reason, Mika's spirit will not interact with you if you're a layer above. However, there is a way around that, and that's by forcing Mika's garden to spawn first. So around this area where I am here, um, sort of like the bottom left, like on, on like the bottom left graves of this square area here where Mika's garden is, we can like go up and down. And whilst I'm not sure exactly what triggers it, um, there we go. Whenever that light change happens, bingo. Mika's garden spawns in without Mika in it. But for some reason, when we do this, we can interact with her spirit from up here. Which means that whenever it turns 2 a.m., we can enter Mika's garden while remaining up here. And Monk is still playing his uh, his gong. I, I I did not get that before. Previously, he just stood there and did nothing. But he's going to keep playing his gong through the night. And what do you know? I'm right on top of Mika's spirit. Perfect. So, now that Mika has arrived, we can head back up to uh, to Monk. And this is where... the This is the only part of the trick that can't be fully done without the cheat engine. Because we simply don't know what to do in regards to this, so I gotta get back over to Monk. Oh yeah, and in this this save state I'm using, he is just standing up, but if he's using the gong, it should be totally fine. Um, it might just delay it a little bit, because he has to, like, stand up, but it should be fine. As long as he's frozen there, it does not matter um, exactly what he's doing, playing the gong or otherwise, but yes, yeah, so we'll line up with him, and then pop up properly, which is that. One, two, three, four, five, six, let's say, uh, and then hold up and left. Bingo, that's perfect. This is where we need to show Monk Dad's wooden gong, but break out, or rather have free movement after doing so. And showing someone an item and having free movement by, like, say, using the end of a damage sequence to regain control for whatever reason, it's just, it's not quite possible to, to do this, or to do that. It is possible to kiss buffer and show an item instead of eating a damage item, which results in the item just floating in the air. Um, so, for example... Just like that. Now, of course, the reason that Monk's kiss was successful there was because I hit the dev trigger, but that's a, that's another thing entirely. But for now, the the point of interest is showing him the wooden gong, right? So you do that, and there's normally nothing you can do. However, with Cheat Engine, I'll show you what we could do if we were able to just break out of this. Or rather, if we just had free movement during this, right? So I'll put this value here to zero, which gives me free movement back. So l let's say we find a way to do that, right? Then we could do this. Once he's in that state, of accepting the wooden gong, it's still in our inventory, so we can just toss it. That way, it goes to the lost and found, and we can pick it up later to bring back to him to kiss him properly, because that's a big problem with the kiss anybody glitch. There are people that you can perform it with, but you can't re-kiss them afterwards, meaning that it's impossible to get all the kisses, because say you used Badian's kiss trigger to kiss Dandy, it's like, well that's great, but you can't reactivate Badian's kiss trigger, so Badian can never be truly kissed. So therefore, there's nothing you can do with it. Uh, but because Monk's kiss is always activated as many times as you want with the wooden gong, if you like, for example, duplicated it, um, or something like that, uh, we can therefore use the trigger here to set up for this and just give it to him again later and actually get his kiss. Whereas we're going to use this trigger to activate Mika's kiss, obviously. 
Um, anyway, so first things first is you want to scroll through this text. Do not, do not talk to Mika now. Do not attempt to talk to Mika now. So whenever he says my dad's wooden gong, you have to eat a damage item because now the gong is going to, well, an imaginary gong just warps all the way over to him. If you don't eat a damage item there, you will lose control after that gong goes over and you won't be able to talk to Mika. Um, so with that done and you still have control, you have to go over to where Mika is and just attempt to talk to her with, uh, you know, X or circle, depending on which version you're playing on. And just make sure you're still on her after this. And boop. <laughs> You've kissed Miss Zombie Mika. Just like that. And there's only one thing in the way of us doing this in an actual All Kisses run. It is so tantalizingly close. And of course, as is usually the case with, um, with a, with a kiss anybody glitch, uh, for one thing, Mika acts as if, well, first of all, she's like in, mostly invisible, except for her arm and eye, which fall out. So that's, mm, that's lovely. But yeah, she, uh, she says goodbye to you as if um, it's just a, a normal thing. But in fact, the game does consider her fully dealt with and kissed. Uh, she will no longer appear here at 2 a.m. Um, if you go to the memory album, of course, she will appear in the memory album. And if you go to sleep, uh, Dad will say that you've kissed uh, Miss Zombie Mika and not Monk, I believe. Although Monk m might still appear in the memory album. Not 100% sure about that, but the fact of the matter with Monk is that you did not enter a kiss cutscene with him, therefore he is not considered kissed, at least uh, by the way things currently are. So, that is the setup. Um, the hardest part of that there was actually getting a setup to reach Monk without the camera changing, but I think I actually got it there, like line up with him, once you get that little bump up, use the d-pad to run up and right for like six steps, and then hold up and left until you run into his interactable, that seems to work. The thing that is in the way of this working is simply the ability to show someone an item and break out at the same time. And not only would doing would uh, finding a way to do that make this possible, but it would also have huge implications for Long Life Town as well, because we could use Cheapot to kiss almost anybody. It wouldn't be possible to use it to kiss Julie or Goro or Leo or Mrs. Plum, but it would be possible to use it to kiss Dandy, Barian, Michelle, uh, and Policeman, and also Monk, actually, because Monk does show up um, in that area of Long Lifetime. So you, you could actually use Cheapot to deal with kissing Monk and not even have to worry about getting the wooden gong back in that scenario. Though, I mean, I don't know how that would work out in all kisses route in which this were possible. So that's a, a, a different topic altogether to do with rooting. But regardless, um, let me show you what I mean. Right, so here we are in a state where, um, thanks to the, the wonders of Cheat Engine, I have as many, uh, <laughs> as many gold raccoons slash tanukis as I could ever want. And so I can show you what I mean with Cheapot here, because Cheapot seem, I, I, like, from what I'm aware of, from what I can think of, he, he seems to be the, the best candidate for this. So I'll show him his, his gold tanuki, give myself free movement back. Uh, and I can, I can like go over to this part of Long Lifetime now, even though it's deloaded, and let's say we, we, we could try it with Michelle, we could try it with Barian, I think he's up here, he is. Yeah, and it, it's, a, it's actually very similar to with a Monk, where I need to wait until he takes, uh, yeah, until he takes it from me, and if I want to retain control, I gotta take another damage item. So unfortunately, Cheapot's a little bit different. Um, after he takes the item from you, he only has one line of dialogue, which kind of messes with changing your kiss target. So before you advance this line of dialogue, you should show your target, um, like pretty much anything else, to like as, as to like fix it somehow, and then move on, then advance the text, and you will kiss them instead of Cheapot. And of course, just like with Monk, you can throw out the Tanuki before he actually takes it from you and pick it up from Lost and Found and do the same thing again. 
Yeah, and, and of course you could just show said Tanuki to Cheap Pot himself to actually properly kiss him. But yeah, so as you can see, I use that to kiss Badian. Uh, using that to kiss Badian would be infinitely faster than sitting through um, Goro's movie twice for the sake of uh, skipping Badian's normal kiss stuff. Um, we could also use it to kiss Policeman, as I mentioned before. Uh, Michelle, we'd only need one eggplant then instead of two. There, there's, there's loads of things with that that could be really, really useful and save quite a lot of time. But the problem is simply... You know, we might have kiss buffering, but showing someone an item and breaking out at the same time... I mean, the thing is, the animation is interruptible. The problem is that whenever you're taking damage, it's not possible to pause. So, if, if, if while we were taking damage, we could pause, that would solve everything. So, here's a, a state that I have here. I have Michelle's dialogue up. But, like, for, for example, right, I can, like, set up for a kiss buffer here. And I can like mash pause. And until the damage is over, nothing happens. In that state, even though you're you technically could have free movement, you're like animation locked almost. And whenever you're in that sort of weird animation lock, even if the the value in memory in, in, in the uh, code here or whatever is set to zero, you still can't open the, the bag, your menu. So it's it's really unfortunate, but I've tried a number of things. There's, there is actually one kind of funky thing that I managed to do, and I'll see if I can show it here. Right, so let's see. Um, I'll set the value to be ready to go to zero, and I'll show Cheapot a frog, and then set the value to zero in the middle of it. Right, so he's reacted to me showing him something, <laughs> but it was a frog. But in spite of that, if I now try to show him the Tanuki, I can still keep free movement, and he recognizes the item as the Tanuki, even though I started off the interaction by showing him the frog. So I don't understand what's up with that, but of course I still had to use the, uh, the value and manually set the value to zero uh, using Cheat Engine in order to break out of the initial showing him the frog thing so it's really unfortunate like it, it feels like it's so close but i've tried and i've tried and i cannot think of anything but the point of this video the point of this uh this whole thing is just for me to express how close we are to saving a lot of time in all kisses if we could just figure something out with this find out a way around it we could skip Mika and save a whole lot of time because, you know, there's a lot there. Mika takes so long. Like, you have to visit her like four or five times. You have to, like, get those herbs and drink the tea with Leo. There's so much stuff. And there's also the damage requirement. We might be able to skip sleeping an extra time or something to that effect because if it weren't for Mika, our health requirement wouldn't need to be that high at all. In fact, it would it could be pretty low. Because as far as I can remember, Mika is the only, like, real damage requirement. Um, oh wait, outside of the wooden gong, you do have to get the wooden gong uh, in all kisses by uh, getting hit by, uh, getting hit by lightning. Besides that, there's no, there'd be no other damage requirements, which would be really, really nice. I would also save us, um, surplus visits to Worldly Desire Temple just for the sake of um, kissing Mika after drinking tea with Leo. And I think it can happen. I, I don't know if it's impossible. I feel like it is, but all it would take is just like one little oddity, one little extra thing, and it, it, it may happen. So I don't know. I'm gonna keep looking into it, um, but I've already looked into it quite a bit. Otherwise I wouldn't have went ahead and made the video whenever uh, I could have solved the problem beforehand. <laughs> But uh, as always, two heads are always better than one, so if any of you have any uh, four-dimensional ideas <laughs> for how this, this might be worked out, uh, please let me know, because I'm, I'm so desperate. I would, I would love it so much if this were possible. But anyway, uh, that is all. So, thanks for watching, everyone. I'll see you next time.